the countries in the world. I've been to maybe 10 or 12 countries in the city. And uh, a lot of the, the questions and answers that, um, that we see from her are actually programmed. So it's like programming, it's like watching a movie. However, she also does have something called conversational mode, which means you can ask her a question. How is the weather? What's your favorite color? And she'll be able to understand, perceive it, and give the appropriate answer. So a lot of the times, um, our host asks us to give you know, very specific answers as we do. How do you make those facial expressions? I mean, that's, I, I, I'm impressed. I, I'm more than impressed. I mean, this is beyond what I expected. How can you make those facial expressions look so real? So it is a combination of um, her skin-like uh, material called flubber. It's patented. It is a combination of various chemicals that we mix that makes uh, that makes the skin look and feel real. In fact, if you come later, you can just touch her on the side there just a little bit. You can feel how real it is. And uh, there's anchors behind the skin to the actual motors that pull the skin to the various expressions that she has. And during my presentation, I'll give a short video, a one-minute video about how the facial expressions work. And with that technology, we can make her so, so human-like. Where are you going with this? I mean, the future. I, I mean, are you expecting like that we can have a Sophia at home? That is the ultimate goal. But I would also say that we're very far from that goal. And we're making you know incremental steps every year, every month towards that goal. And we see today certain features that make us feel that she's human. But if she were in your house today and you asked her Sophia, can you get me a cup of coffee? She couldn't do it. She's not capable of doing it. But we have other technologies like the iRobot vacuum cleaner that does something very specific. You turn it on and vacuums your floor. What we want to have is a robot that looks and behaves as human and can do all the tasks that you ask a human person to do. We're not quite there yet. Wouldn't that be taking away from, you know, from the humanity of you know, someone there, that warmth that you would have? I get that question a lot, and um, the question is, um, you know, what do you associate with? And because we look at her, and she looks human, and we know logically, in our minds, logically, that she's not human. She's made of rubber, of circuits, of hardware, and software, and, you know, plastic, right? We know that she's not human. But when you look at her, and you don't think logically about it, psychologically, psychologically in your mind, your mind will trick itself to forget the fact that she's not human. And that's what happens, actually. So when you look at her, and you don't think logically about how the circuits work, or, or how the hardware works, you, you actually believe that she's human. And when you, when you go to a movie, when you go to a, a very well-made movie for two hours, you're immersed in the movie, do you actually think that it's a movie, or do you think you're actually in the movie? Right, that's the experience that movie makers want to make, and that's the experience that we're trying to make as well with our robots. We're trying to make it so real that you don't forget that she's a uh, uh, that she's a robot. The first prototype, I understand, was over a million, and now the cost. The cost has come down considerably. But we both, we spent on millions of dollars in research and development, and the research and development we still need to do because we don't have a robot that is uh, that is commercially available in homes, the larger ones. Great, so maybe some of you have a, a couple of questions for Sophia this morning. I go